Hello guys, welcome to another video in the series of coding. Today we are going to do a problem which is called ones and zeros. So I given an array of binary strings STRs and two integers m and n. You have to return the size of the largest subset of STRs such that there are at most m zeros and n ones in the subset. A uh, set X is a subset of a set Y if all elements of X are also elements of Y. Let's try to take an example to understand this. Okay. Suppose we are given these three uh, strings. I have written down the number of zeros and ones in each string. So the first string has one zero and it has two ones. The second string has two zeros and two ones. The third string has no uh, one but it has one zero. Right? So now let's say we are um, asked to find out the maximum subsets we can take with some given m and n right let's say uh, it's given that uh, m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 2 that means that we are allowed to take only three zeros and two ones in our entire subset so how do we solve this problem so we are going to go step by step right so we are going to consider at each step we have two choices whether to take the first string or not Similarly, to take the second string or not. Similarly, to take the third string or not. Okay, let's see it with the help of an example. So, in the first case, okay, if we take the first string, right, then we will be left with how many zeros? If we take the first string, we had three zeros. But if we take the first string, three minus one is equal to two, right? So, we will be left with only two zeros because out of three zeros, we are going to use up one zero in the first string because first string has one zero right so three minus one is equal to two so if we take the first string we'll be left with only two zeros and we will be left with two minus two which is equal to zero ones right so this is one of the choices that we have if we take the first string okay now if we take the first string uh, we are at i equal to zero currently and there are three strings right corresponding to i equal to zero i equal to one and i equal to two Okay, so if we take the first string, we can move forward to the next index, which is i equal to 1. Okay, but we have a second choice. It's not necessary to take the first string. Let's say we decide not to take the first string. We can continue forward, right, without taking the first string. In that case, we'll be left with same number of zeros and ones as before because we are not using any, any such thing. So m is equal to 3 and n is equal to 2 will remain as such and we can move forward to the next index. These are the two choices that we have. In case we decide to take the first string, we are taking one string, we are taking one sub, one subset, right, in our solution. So, whatever the answer we will get, plus one is going to be our answer because we are taking the first string. In the second choice, we are not taking the first string, okay. So, whatever max value we get out of these two is going to be our answer because we need to return the maximum maximum number of subsets that we can take so we have two choices among these two choices whichever choice returns the maximum answer that is what we are going to return finally okay similarly we can expand this function call further we have the function call m equal to 2 n equal to 0 i equal to 1 right so we can expand this function call also further now we have choice for the second string okay now note that we cannot take the second string because we have n equal to 0 means we don't have any any ones at all to use but the second string requires two ones right so we can never take the second string okay because n equal to zero does not allow us to take any second any second string further right so we'll just continue with the function call and we'll go to the next index i equal to two okay now let's um, see the next case now we have the second condition for the next function call which is for this function call right in the function call m equal to 3 n equal to 2 i equal to 1 this function call we can take the second string in this case right when we did not take the first string in this in this choice when we did not take the first string we have sufficient number of ones and zeros to take the second string okay so if i take the second string then i will have 3 minus 2 which is equal to 1 right one zeros remaining i will have two minus two which is equal to zero zero ones remaining and i can go to the next index and since i'm taking the second string i'm writing one plus okay now this is one of the choices but it's not necessary that i take the second string i have one more choice where i don't take the second string also in that case i have the same number of zeros and ones that i started with and i can continue to the next function call right now similarly this function call also i can expand as such i can take the third string or not if i take the third string then in that case 2 minus 1 is equal to 1 i will be left with 1 0 0 ones and i'll be i'll go to the next index but it's not necessary that i take the third string i have a choice where i don't take the third string right so similarly i can expand all other remaining function calls as such and i can build the entire recursive tree 
after building this entire recursive tree right when i reach the condition i equal to 3 in this case i can exit because i have only three strings right so when i reach i equal to 3 this entire function call will exit and it will return 0 so i can return 0 here okay so i'm going to return 0 from this function call similarly from this function call also i'm going to return 0 so let me quickly write so i'm going to return 0 from this function call and in this function call also i'm going to return 0 okay similarly in this function call this entire function call will also exit and it will return 0 Similarly, this entire function call will also exit and this will return 0. This function call will also return 0. Okay. So, I have uh, the same conditions in all of them. I am going to take maximum of 1 comma 0. So, maximum of 1 comma 0 is 1, right? So, all these three function calls will end and all these three function calls are going to return 1. Okay. So, this function call is going to return 1 back to its parent call. So, this will return 1 here. So, let me quickly write 1 there when this function call ends it will return 1 okay similarly when this function call ends it's going to return 1 so let me write 1 here similarly when this function call ends it's going to return 1 back now this function call is going to see maximum of 2 comma 1 right we have this max here so maximum between 2 and 1 is obviously 2 so we are going to return 2 back to the main function call okay so this function call is going to return 2 and this function call is 1 plus 1 this is also 2 now the maximum between 2 and 2 is again 2 so we are going to return 2 back to the main parent call so the answer for this case is 2 right so the maximum number of subsets that we can have is 2 how are we getting 2 see we we got 2 in two ways right we got maximum of 2 comma 2 why did we get that because we can either take the first string and the third string right if we take the first string 1 plus 1 is 2 right so we can use up two zeros we have three zeros similarly two plus zero is two we can use up two ones we have two ones right this was one of the choices and the next choice was you take the second and the third string okay in this case also two plus one is equal to three two plus zero is equal to two you have three zeros you can use it you have two ones you can use it so we got two cases and in both the cases we are getting maximum subsets as two so two was our answer okay this is our logic this was the recursive code let's write the recursive code then we will see we will get the time limit exceeded error we will see how to optimize this recursive code okay so first of all let's write the recursive code we have to write the um, function to find the maximum number of subsets so let me pass strs let me pass m let me pass n and let me pass something which is the index which is the current index that i am traversing so initially i will start with zero right because i am starting with the zeroth uh, index and i will go on till the end of the string okay so i have a function find max whatever that function returns here i am going to return okay uh, so let me copy the parameters quickly from here okay and i have one more extra parameters which is index now what is my base condition is very simple whenever we saw index was reaching the end of the size of the strs in that case we are returning zero okay otherwise it's very simple right first of all we have to count the number of zeros and ones so let me give one condition to count the number of zeros we can use the count function uh, so wherever we are at the current index in the string it will count the number of zeros for that particular string how will it count in the third parameter i can give zero so this will count the number of zeros if i specify this parameter right now i have to also count the number of ones so i need not count the number of ones again using count function i can just give the size of the string minus count zeros because both are complementary right the string consists of only zeros and ones so i can use this now i have two choices right what are the two choices at each step either i take the string or not if i take the string then i am reducing the number of zeros that i have okay i had to use m zeros now since i have used up zeros by taking the string then i have less zeros remaining okay i can just give m minus count zeros similarly i can give n minus count ones and i can go forward to the next index this is one of the choices that i have okay what is the next choice that i don't use up this string i try to look for better answer later right so these are the two choices that i have now if i choose the first choice then i will also have to give one plus this because i am taking the string if i am taking the string then i am i am already taking that string i am already taking that subset so i can give one plus whatever this function returns okay otherwise i can take the second choice now whatever i i get right 
maximum among these two choices that i can return as the answer because eventually i want to return the maximum number of subsets okay now this this choice is not always valid right because my m and n can never be negative so i will have to give the condition check here that m and n should never turn negative so i will have to give that condition check okay if it is possible to use up the zeros and ones then only i use up if it is not possible then it's very simple i cannot use up the string so i can just give this same function call again okay that's it this is a simple recursive code so now if i run this code let me first of all submit this code and see what error it's going to give it's going to give time limit exceeded error right let's see it's giving time limit exceeded okay how can we optimize this code okay let's think about it see we are using three parameters right as we are using actually uh, three things which are determining our solution m n and index okay now you can see let me try to uh, write down the function calls again and when i write the function calls again right let's quickly let me write the function calls again see when i write the function calls again you can notice that some function calls are repeating m equal to 1 n equal to 0 i equal to 3 is repeating again m equal to 1 n equal to 0 i equal to 3 so since some function calls are repeating again and again you have to do some calculations right this is where you are getting time complexity problem so i can optimize this uh, piece of code how can i do that is i am entering into recursive calls again and again right so i can just store the answers of this recursive call into a matrix and whenever i have already visited the given function call i need not again enter it rather i can just see the answer from the matrix so that is a logic okay so we are going to use dynamic programming and we are going to store the answer that's why i am giving matrix name as dp and i'm going to resize my matrix so dp dot resize it's having three parameters right m n and index so i am going to give that as the sizes okay so vector vector int so i'm declaring a 3d matrix because we have three parameters and i'm going to resize the given matrix accordingly and initially in the given matrix i am going to give all the values as minus 1 now the logic is whenever we are uh, seeing the function calls right and whenever these function calls finish and return before returning we are going to store their answers in the dp matrix so here i am just giving additional line of code here i am going to give return dp of okay. there are three parameters m n and index so i am going to store the answer before returning in this dp matrix so that next time whenever i see a function call with the same parameters m n and index instead of calculating these values again i am just going to see them in the dp matrix so if dp of m n index is not equal to minus 1 why am i checking for minus 1 because initially i have given the value minus 1 right so if the value is not minus 1 that means i have saved the answer and i have changed the answer i can just look it up in the dp matrix and i can return the answer i need not calculate the values again and again by entering into recursive function calls okay that is the logic so now let me sum it and see now this should not give time limit exceeded error okay so it's getting accepted but there is a better way to do this and we can do it using the bottom up approach also this was a top down approach okay let's see the bottom up approach now let's see how we can do it now we can also solve this problem in a better way and that is bottom up solution right so we can build the dp matrix from the very beginning okay? so let's start building the dp matrix from the very beginning we need not use any extra function we can just do it within this function itself so I have str dot size okay plus one, and then I have vector vector in. So this is the way to declare a three D matrix. I have to give the size parameters as such. So I'm just giving all the parameters, right? So I have built my DP matrix. Now once I have built my DP matrix, what I can do is I can start building the answer in it from the very beginning. Okay. So I can just start. i have three parameters right one is the current string at which i am that is the first parameter i second is the number of zeros that i have right so i am giving that as uh, j so the number of zeros in this condition can be from 
0 to m okay and the next parameter is the number of ones that i have so that i can give as k and k can go up to n okay so now again as similar uh, approach we have seen again we have we are just doing the same thing but in a bottom up way we have to again give the count function we have to calculate the number of uh, zeros that we have right so i can just uh, use the same count function as i had used previously and i am just counting the number of zeros that i have and I, again i can declare the same variable count zeros and to calculate the number of ones after this i can just use the logic that the number of ones are complementary to the number of uh, zeros so i can just subtract that from the size now once i have built this right what I'm going to do, I again have two choices, right? What are the two choices that we had at each step we saw, right? From, from the recursive solution, we know that we have two choices, right? Similarly, here also we have two choices. Either you are going to take this subset or you are going to not take this subset, right? If you are going to take the subset, what, what is going to happen? You are taking one, right? You are taking one subset. So you are taking the current subset. You are taking the current string. So you are definitely taking this current string. So for that, I have written one plus now whatever previously you have stored answer right in this matrix so in the previous index whatever answer you have stored okay but since you are going to take this current string that means you are not going to have the same number of zeros as before right so whatever the number of zeros you have from that you can subtract the number of zeros as before right as before so you can take j minus count zeros and similarly you can take k minus count ones okay so you can see the answer in the dp matrix whatever value you have calculated before right one plus this corresponding value this is the case when you are going to take this subset right so this value is going to give the case when you are going to accept this subset whatever till now with the remaining uh, coins that you have available with the remaining uh, number of zeros and once you have available with that how many subsets you can build and then since you are taking the subset you are adding one to that okay now this either this is going to give the best choice or if you don't take this subset at all if you don't take this string at all you will be left with the same number of j and k right so you can use up those okay use in other strings either this or this any of these choices are going to give you the maximum answer whichever gives you the maximum answer that you can just store so dp of i j k will be equal to whatever maximum value you're getting from the two choices now this will not always be valid you have to give the condition check this should be greater than equal to zero okay otherwise it can go out of bounds similarly this should also be greater than equal to zero okay now if you are not entering into this condition then it's very simple then your dp of i j k will be simply whatever previously you have computed the value right it will be that simply okay so this is the simple three for loop code that you have and this is a bottom up code that you have right so after this is done you have to return the answer so the answer will be stored finally in the last value so you can just check given all the possibilities what is your final answer so you can just return the last value in your matrix okay now let's submit and see if this code is going to work okay okay there is one thing in this uh, which i just saw see in this case what we are doing we are taking i up to strs dot size right i less than equal to so in this case what we'll do we'll take i from the first string uh, so corresponding to the i is equal to one means we are looking at the first string so here i will give i minus one so here i will have to give i minus one for it to be valid otherwise in the last index it will not be valid right so uh, if we are taking i equal to one we are actually at the zeroth index or the first string in the uh, given input right and then this will work for all the test cases okay now let's submit and see it should work so again it is giving some problem let us see let us try to see where the problem is okay here i guess we should give m plus one let me submit and see again whether it's fine now it's accepted okay thank you for being patient